Hello, welcome to MLS QR, MLS Quick Review for Medical Lab Science, Clinical Lab Science. And today we'll talk about hemoglobin synthesis and this hemoglobins. Later on, we'll have question and answer based on the ACP border certification exam. Let's get started. Understanding some basic fundamentals of hemoglobin synthesis will help us understand more about the etiology and pathophysiology of anemias, hemoglobinopathies, thalassemias, porphyrias, ion kinetics, red blood cell morphology, and more. Hemoglobin synthesis is part of erythropoiesis where low blood oxygen levels stimulates the kidney to secrete erythropoietin hormone. Hypoxia from anemia or chronic lung disease are often the initiators of erythropoietin secretion, where the target tissue is the bone marrow. Erythropoietin stimulates the bone marrow erythroid precursors to synthesize. Protein globin chains are the products of the erythroid precursors. Let's look at one of them. A helical protein globin chain with a hydrophobic cleft pocket for heme is waiting for the heme group. Erythroid ribosomes made this alpha polypeptide chain. Protoporphyrin 9 is made in the mitochondria of the erythroid precursors. Please refer to my other video, Introduction to Sideroblastic Anemias and Iron Deficiency Anemia and Porphyrias, for more detail of the biochemical pathway. How does ferrous iron in the 2 plus valence state get to the protoporphyrin ring? Ferrochelatase, also known as heme synthase, is the key enzyme to chelate ferrous iron to the protoporphyrin 9 ring, forming heme. Heme fits into the hydrophobic cleft of the alpha globin chain, forming heme plus alpha monomer. Beta globin chain is made from instructions from the genes in chromosome 11, forming a beta globin or non alpha globin chain produced in roughly equal amounts. Otherwise, you get a thalassemia, which we will see in another video. Non alpha globin chains include beta, delta, and gamma. Heme plus the beta globin chain form a heme beta globin monomer. Heme alpha polypeptide chain joins with the heme beta polypeptide chains to form a alpha beta dimer. Two alpha and two beta dimers come together to form a hemoglobin tetramer, the complete hemoglobin molecule alpha 2, beta 2, which is the predominant hemoglobin in adults, known as hemoglobin A. Hemoglobin A has a quaternary structure, which is the three-dimensional structure of the hemoglobin. This graph shows that in utero, alpha and gamma chains are produced with the decline of gamma chains after birth. Gamma chains are the ones used for hemoglobin F, the tough hemoglobin needed in utero. New beta chains rise rapidly after birth to replace gamma as the main non-alpha globin chain forming hemoglobin A. And delta chains below rise slowly but are in the minority. These non-alpha globin chains join with alpha globin chains to form hemoglobin A2. The majority of adult hemoglobin is hemoglobin A, which is 2 alpha and 2 beta and 4 heme rings. A small percentage of adult hemoglobin is hemoglobin A2, which is 2 alpha plus 2 delta and 4 heme rings.
Hemoglobin F is found mainly in during the fetal life, and it is a tough hemoglobin resistant to alkali and also acid dilutions. And it includes two alpha, two gamma, as well as the four heme rings. Not only is hemoglobin F tough to resist acidosis during uh, fetal life, it is also having a remarkable affinity for oxygen under hypoxic conditions so that it can withdraw oxygen from the maternal circulation in the placenta and deliver it to the baby's tissues. Other interesting facts about hemoglobin F is that it is increased in beta thalassemias. And also, this is the principle behind the Kleiauer Betke stain and test in blood banking. The KB stain and test is an acid lesion test in the postpartum blood, and it is used to detect fetal cells in the mother reflecting fetal maternal hemorrhaging expressed as a percentage of whole blood. And calculations will aid the obstetrician if more than one dose of rural gamma is needed for RH negative mothers who have RH positive babies and a positive fetal screen rosette test. We'll learn more about this in blood banking. Hemoglobin A1c is especially interesting in discussions of monitoring glucose levels in diabetes and prediabetes. In our blood circulation, a small percentage of hemoglobin A is glycated with glucose molecules added to the end terminal of beta hemoglobin chains forming hemoglobin A1c. Elevation of hemoglobin A1c reflects two to three months of elevated blood glucose levels. Dishemoglobins are dysfunctional hemoglobins that are unable to transport oxygen, usually due to an acquired offending agent that alters the hemoglobin structure to prevent it from binding oxygen. Let's look at methemoglobin, self-hemoglobin, and carboxyhemoglobin. Methemoglobin, otherwise known as ferrihemoglobin, is the result of a reversible oxidation of ferrous ions through the ferric state 3+, and it cannot carry oxygen. Ferric ion does not bind oxygen, and it is a rare incidence of oxidation in drugs, for example, primaquine and anti-malaria drugs and nitrites. Sometimes sulfur drugs and nitrites in food, preservatives, dried fruit, and meats will cause an irreversible oxidation with the addition of the sulfur atom to the protoporphyrin ring of heme, and this prevents oxygen from binding. Note that no automated methods are available for detecting self-hemoglobin. Carboxyhemoglobin. Carbon monoxide has an affinity 240 times more than oxygen. It is a silent killer, odorless and colorless gas, and situations arise when inhaling smoke, during fires, industrial pollutants, coal, charcoal, leaky heaters, smog, tobacco smoke. This causes hypoxia because carbon monoxide outcompetes oxygen and it doesn't allow hemoglobin to pick up oxygen, causing hypoxia due to carbon monoxide poisoning. Just a quick note on hemoglobin electrophoresis. For more details, please see my other video on the hemoglobinopathies. Let's go over some questions and answers that are similar to the ones presented in the AC study guide for the Florida of Certification exams.
and subscribe and leave a comment. I look forward to presenting my next videos for Thalassemias and Hemoglobin function.